Hey everybody, it's Ben here again. I want to show you another useful tool for uh, helping design your own solar system. I designed my own solar system and installed it on my garage, and so far I've been very happy. Uh, today I want to show you a web page called Renvu or Renview.com, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, this is a mail order solar supplier out in California, and you can check out their stuff at uh, Renvu.com. Uh, the main thing that I really want to show you is their instant design and quote tool. So whether or not you buy anything from them, they've got this uh, neat little tool uh, that can help you design a system, make sure you didn't forget any components, uh, help you figure out how much space you would need for your system, and a lot of other great information in there. Uh, they also do usually have some very good weekly specials. Uh, so if you sign up with them, you get on their mailing list, you'll get an email every week with what those weekly specials are. And if you're you're going to spend some time planning your system, you might end up knowing exactly what it is you're looking for and then just wait for some of that equipment to go on sale to uh, get a good deal on it. Um, they also have some other good links here under plan and design. They have calculators and they have links to a number of uh, other online tools, including the PV Watts tool, which uh, was my last video. Um, also a link to the Iron Ridge design tool, which I'll show you as well. Uh, very handy uh, racking tool. It helps you calculate wind and snow loads, things like that. But let's take a look at this instant design and quote tool. If we click in here, uh, this is going to help us figure out exactly what we need for our system. Uh, up at the top, there's a video you can watch through that if you want to learn how to use this. Otherwise, just uh, follow me and I'll walk you through it. So first of all, is this a grid tie or an off-grid system? Well, mine is a, a grid tie system, but uh, they also do allow for off-grid, keeping in mind that off-grid is going to cost more because batteries are expensive. You can also tell it if you want the full system or maybe you're just looking for a certain thing, just solar panels, just inverters, whatever. Um, it also wants you to say, hey, what type of inverters are you looking at? And one of the options is, is well, I, I don't know, maybe suggest something for me. Uh, I knew that I was looking for micro inverters, so I'm going to select that. Then also, do you want to choose certain brands and products? Maybe there's a, a very good reason why you want to use a particular brand, or, or maybe not. Maybe just whatever's a, a good price. Uh, either way, you can select that. I'm going to do kind of a walkthrough of what I did with my system. So I'm going to tell it, um, sure, I want a full system, but I'm going to be going with microinverters. And yeah, I'm going to I'm going to pick my own brand names here. We'll hit continue. Uh, first thing, uh, solar panels. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pick some. Let's see, Solar World, American made. Uh, now in my system, I actually got my solar panels from somewhere else, and they're not even listed on here. Uh, so we'll just use the Solar World uh, panel here as an example. Click it, hit continue. Now, how are these solar panels going to be mounted? Uh, at my place, I mounted them directly to a tilted roof, uh, the south face of my garage. But you could do a flat roof or on the ground. That's going to affect uh, what kind of hardware you're going to need for mounting the equipment. Uh, and then, of course, if it's going on your roof, you, you have to consider what type of roofing material you have. Uh, again, that's mostly about the fasteners uh, that will connect your racking into the roof. Now in my area, most people have uh, composite asphalt shingles, um, but my garage, we put a metal roof on there. So here, uh, it's asking for how do you want to arrange these panels? And you can put them in either portrait or landscape, you know, uh, vertical or horizontal, depending on what fits. And you can do a whole bunch of different numbers of rows if you want. I'm going to go with three rows. And I'm going to say, oh, now I did a, a basically a grid system. So I had eight panels in each of the three rows. But let's say there's uh, something blocking... Um, a row on your roof. You know, you have a, a vent stack from a bathroom coming up or maybe a skylight or or something else. You could change this. You could say, well, I only want uh, six panels here because um, part of it's going to be blocked by something coming through the roof. Uh, Unirack has been a very popular brand of uh, racking. Um, I went with the Iron Ridge system and the main reason for that was very high quality components 
And it also worked with the integrated grounding that was built in with my Enphase microinverters. I did use the S5 brand clamps. Um, four foot span is also what I did, although I did go with the standard duty racking uh, just to make sure everything was nice and solid for uh, wind and snow loads in my area. So down here, it actually now shows uh, kind of a little diagram of, of what things are going to look like. Um, and this essentially is exactly what I put on my garage. Um, it was uh, about 18 feet from the peak to the eave and 29 feet from one edge out to the other. I found this hilarious, this little bug here, uh, 26 foot 12 inches, which is, of course, uh, 27 feet. I don't know why that's an error in the system, but that should be 27 feet. Uh, keep in mind... Uh, at this point, you would have already been up on your roof, measured, and made sure that you knew exactly how large your roof is. Uh, the other thing you have to account for is in some areas, uh, you may be required to have a very specific setback from the edge of the roof, uh, typically three feet on either side and three feet from the peak. Uh, in my area, that was not an issue, but that is something you do need to check on. So now we've got a racking sketch. All this figured out, we'll hit continue. And it says, okay, which inverters do you want to use? And another question is, what is the minimum temperature in your area? That's important because solar panels will put out higher voltage the colder they get. And if you live in a, a cold, wintry area, it's actually possible for your solar panels to output a high enough of a voltage to, in some cases, just cause your inverter not to work, and in other cases, to actually damage the inverter. So that's why that's important. Um, I'm using Enphase's older system. Uh, their newer system of uh, microinverters is the IQ. Uh, and then there's other companies that make microinverters as well. So we're just showing some of these on here. I'll pick that just because that's what I actually used. Uh, here's another interesting thing, this power inverter rating of the panel versus the inverter. This took a little while for me to wrap my mind around. Um, I used 260 watt panels, but the inverters that I used, they're only rated at 215 watts. And if you look up the specs, uh, this inverter can actually go a little higher than that. Um, what's kind of interesting is that that 260 watts of my solar panels, that is the, the, the peak output. That is only under scientific standard test conditions, uh, conditions that really never happen in the real world. And in fact, when the solar panels, when you would expect them to put out the most power in the middle of the summer, uh, it's also when it's hot outside and solar panels uh, will output a reduced power when they're hot. So what happens is you, uh, if you're working with microinverters, you actually don't need a microinverter that can that's rated for the same number of watts as what your solar panel is. Um, I did a little re research on this and actually found out that these Enphase 215s were really quite a good match for my Helios 260 watt panels. And th that's what this is all about here. Um, commonly, uh, you might want solar panels to be about 125% uh, the wattage of your actual uh, microinverter. And if instead of going with microinverters, if I, uh, I go back here, I go to previous, and let's tell the system that we instead want, uh, instead of microinverters, uh, a more the traditional string inverter, and then continue our way through again. Again, still the same modules, still on a metal roof, the same configuration. And we continue to get back to this point. Give it a second to load. So now with a traditional string inverter, it's going to ask us um, a couple of questions for which particular one we're looking at. And now this minimum temperature and maximum temperature becomes uh, a lot more important. That maximum temperature um, is because in the summer, in the heat, the solar panels will output less power. But kind of the more important number is that minimum temperature. You know, the coldest it gets in the winter in lo your location. 
And when you have um, these serial string inverters, uh, the voltage is going to add up as you, you connect one solar panel to the next, to the next, to the next. So maybe you have uh, 500 volts, but if the inverter gets 600 volts in it, it'll, it'll actually be damaged. And there are um, some numbers that have to do with a, a temperature coefficient that the colder the panels get, the higher the voltage they can output. So again, do check with this number. You can look up um, historical weather data in your area and then use the proper number here. So I'm just going to go back um, again. I just wanted to show you the example of if you were using a, a series inverter. I'm just going to go back and pick those microinverters again. And you, uh, you can actually save multiple versions. You can actually go through here, um, create a project, save it, go through again, create a different project. So for example, you could make two projects, one with microinverters, one with string inverters, and you could actually compare the two systems. Um, one thing that's kind of interesting about that is there's, there's a difference in cost. Um, and if budget is a concern and, hey, when isn't it, uh, that might be one of the things that you definitely want to check with. So I'll just go through here again. And this is uh, an online tool, so it is just uh, going to the web uh, as it's doing this. Okay, so here I'm going to select those inverters again. Add monitoring. We'll hit yes. Uh, depending on the brand name you choose, the monitoring uh, varies a little bit. A lot of the uh, microinverter systems, the data all goes to the web, and then you're able to uh, connect to the company's web page with a private account and see information on your system. Balance of system, or BOS, that's the cables, uh, disconnect, uh, labels, tools, all of those different things you'll need for the system. And here's another kind of an important section, permitting services. Um, you're going to have to give a proposal to your power company and probably to your, your building inspector or your local authority having jurisdiction and show them what you want to do. Uh, typically, you're going to need at least a line diagram. That's kind of a, an engineering drawing of uh, how everything's connected together. Um, but you... You might also need uh, a sort of an aerial view map. Uh, you might need to specify exactly where all the pieces of equipment are located, things like that. I did all that myself. So I originally did no permitting service, but let's just hit full permitting package here and continue. So at this point, it says, aha, what do you want to do with all this? You have to agree to their terms. I'm going to call this my sample solar project. And basically, when I hit continue, I'm saving it. It's going to uh, generate all the information about the system. Uh, it just takes a minute to go through. Um, the big thing that it does right away is it gives you uh, a list of all of the components that you need. And it's going to be uh, how many of the solar panels, the details of the solar panels, how many of the microinverters or a single string inverter if you want that way. Uh, any special cables that you'll need. Uh, with the microinverters, you need a special connector that goes on the unused end of the cable. So you need a branch terminator. Um, there is a tool to unplug uh, the microinverters. Uh, you need that tool. Um, communications gateway that lets me um, have the microinverters uh, talk to the internet. It's also used to commission them. Um, here, this is the S5 clamps. Uh, what's kind of nice here is it actually tells me how many I need. Did I know how many I needed before? Eh, not really. Uh, so it pop, pops that number up for me there. It also tells me uh, how many of the pieces of racking I need, uh, splices for the racking, um, how many feet I'm going to need for the racking, uh, lots of other great stuff here. Um, a stopper sleeve for the bolts that work with the system. 
end caps uh, to cover the exposed ends of the racking, grounding lugs. Um, down here, for example, we have an AC disconnect that's going to be used to uh, disconnect the solar from the, uh, the main power system. A lot of different information in here and included at the bottom uh, safety labels and the permit services. Now notice though it, it gives us all these part numbers and quantities and everything doesn't tell us anything about prices at all. Uh, part of that is because prices vary, they change over time. So right here if I click this email me a quote uh, this will go through and in a few minutes I would get a quote in the mail um, that would even start an order where I could basically say, yes, this is exactly what I'd want. I could come back to the web page and order it. Uh, it'll also tell me all the prices, especially things like this uh, design and permit package. Maybe I look at the cost of that and go, ooh, it seems kind of pricey. Maybe I can save some money by doing that work myself. Or, hey, these labels, there's a whole bunch of different labels in this package. Maybe I, I only need a couple of those labels. Why bother buying the whole thing? The other thing that's kind of nice here, uh, design drawings, there's the panel layout. So if we click that, that is um, that layout for the solar panels and we know what those sizes are. This is a great thing to print out uh, and definitely helps you laying out the racking and then uh, arranging and laying out the solar panels. There's also some data sheets. Uh, of course, those are available from the manufacturers themselves, but they pop up right here as well. So that is the basic overview of the solar kit guide, this neat little um, tool that you can use right at renvu.com. Uh, their instant design and quote tool. Remember, they also have um, some other great calculators here. I'll be going over a couple others uh, here in the near future. Uh, now, these companies are out in California. So if you're by California, fantastic. If you're not by California, um, well, that can actually cost you a little bit of money if you take a look at estimated shipping time and shipping costs. I happen to be in the Midwest, and it would cost about $600 to ship a pallet of solar panels from out here out to my house. That seemed like a lot of money for shipping, and that's one reason why I bought my solar panels locally. I also bought my racking locally as 14-foot-long uh, sections. There'd be a, a trucking surcharge on that. Uh, they do have a neat little thing, their Megawatt Club, where if you are going to be doing a lot of ordering from them, um, you, you can become a Megawatt Club that costs a fair amount of money, but it's the free shipping. So uh, I believe that Megawatt Club membership, uh, let's see here, $950. Well, if I was doing two systems where I live, maybe I was doing my own system and one for a friend down the street, uh, you know, we could have gotten that Megawatt Club membership gotten our free shipping on all those solar panels and kind of come out ahead. So if you do want to buy from these guys, that is uh, one thing to consider. I have heard of more than one person going in together, uh, sharing an account and uh, being able to take advantage of that Megawatt Club membership. So anyways, that's renvu.com. They've got some very nice uh, online mail order prices, but more importantly, they have some handy little tools for you to use to help design your solar system. Until next time, stay charged up.